Hello everyone, this is Indra, working as assistant professor in Department of Nutrition and Dietetics at KSR College of Arts and Science for Women. Today we are going to learn about the subject Quantity Food Service and Physical Facilities. Under this, the topic is about delivery, receiving and storage. Delivery procedure. A number of steps are involved before food and ingredient delivery can take place. The procedure usually followed in established as the supplier gets an order in writing stating the date on which supplies are required. He passes it on to his store department or purchasing officer. The order is then noted to be kept ready for delivery on the specified date. It is transported to the buyer stores for receiving. The goods are delivered along with two copies, copies of delivery chalon or notes, one signed by the buyer and returned to the supplier in confirmation of having received the goods. And second is returned by the buyer for counter-checking the bill or invoice when it is received from the supplier for payment. The invoice or bill is then passed on the account department for making the payment. Second one is receiving. Once delivery procedures has been completed, the receiving process begins as under. The delivery notice checked with copy of the order placed, counts, weight or volume or checked to tally with the amounts of various items on the delivery note. The quantity of the all ingredients are checked with the specification given to the supplier. Any unacceptable items should be returned with the person bringing the delivery along with a note on the delivery note, duly signed by both parties with reasons for rejection and return specified. When the delivery note is signed, the materials that are delivered have been accepted. In case any damaged item is noticed, after the delivery, the supplier is informed telephonically. This is followed by a request in writing to the replace the same amount with specified quantity quality in exchange for the received item. A receiving material is generally done close to the storage or just outside them so it is easier to store them for receipt and checking. In st small establishment, it, it may be a matter of providing a receiving baggie that is a space in which a weighing scale and a work table is placed to count up or weigh foods as they arrive and check against delivery notes. The area is just outside the main kitchen of the establishment from where most of the fresh items go directly for preparation instead of being stored. In larger establishment, the receiving area may be well designed space providing with weighing, washing and packing facilities for storing food in cold or other storage immediately on receipt. This is an example for payment receipt. Then the storage. Storekeeping is one of the most neglected activities in small scale establishment. The first principle in storekeeping is to know what is where when it is needed by the user department. Most Food materials need to be stored for different length of time and at a different temperature to preserve their wholesomeness till required for the preparation and service. For effective storage of food items, therefore, two types of storage are used. The dry storage room, meant for non-perishable commodities like cereals and their products, pulses, legumes, sugar, spices, canned foods, fats and oils, etc. And low temperature storage for semi-perishable and perishable foods. Foods stored in an establishment should be suited for an easy access by the user of user department as well as suppliers without causing any interference in the flow of work of all concerned. Dry store rooms should be well lighted so that every item placed in them is easily visible and identifiable. Good ventilation helps to prevent spoilage and maintain the temperature required. From the point of view of security, it is general practice to provide only one entrance exists to stores. This also provides better control of deliveries and issues to the user department. It should suffice here to mention that storage equipment is now designed for easy reach and mobility so that small establishment can get storerooms clean without having to complete empty them. A lot of damage is done to quality when foods are not stored in systematic. These are the examples for a food that is uh, to be stored in a, a storage area. General procedure for storage. The storage procedure varies from the food items, its vulnerability to spoilage, quantity in which bought and nature of packaging. First, the jute or poly bags. An item delivered in bulk bag like sugar, flour, cereals, rices, pulses uh, are packed in jute or poly bags in quantities of 20, 50 or 100 kgs. This should be cross stacked keeping a maximum of 6 bag to a stack placed on a slatted platform. Then cartons and cartons and cases. Uh, cartons of canned foods, biscuits, etc. should be stacked with their labels, visible for identification and open on the side for easy access to packs. 
tins or small cardboard pack or jars these packs are generally used for dried foods preserves mixes jellies etc and may be lined up one in front of the front of the other each row having packs of same item as a rule vegetables and fruits required to be stored in areas separate from the main tray stores especially root vegetables this is because root vegetables passes on their odors to other foods easily and through respiration also increase the temperature of the store oils and fats need special attention in storage because they tend to get rancid in the presence of light low temperature storage are based on the fact that microbial activity decrease with uh, temperature and thereby prolongs the storage life of perishable items egg and dairy products requires uh, 5 to 10 degree as a as against meat fish and poultry which need to be stored 0 to 20 degree celsius if stored for more than 2 2 or 3 days for a short period of time 2 through 3 days 0 to 3 3 degree uh, centigrade is sufficient the storage life of the food at 21 degree celsius has been thank you